that was? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, we're going to start. Uh, Bobby's going to read Matthew chapter 5, verses chapter five. 13 through 16. Ooh, I need to read a bunch, huh? Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good nothing, good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. What are you? Light of the light. world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on the, but on a candlestick, and give it, it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I like it. It says Jesus calls the people who committed to follow him salt and light. Yes. Let's Think together every possible meaning and symbolism we can think of for salt and light and what it may have to do with being a follower of Jesus. Salt. We were talking about this on the way home, weren't yeah, we? We were talking about it, and to me, it, it reminds me of adding taste to things, adding flavor, adding spice, adding, you know, oomph. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bland. Meaningful. Mm -hmm. It gives bland food meaning. You ever eat gravy without salt, you know exactly what salt's for. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Taters like without that gravy salt. You made the other day? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, you could stand a spoon up in my gravy. <laughs> my gravy's the only thing I know of that you have to have A1 and a knife to eat. <laughs> That's funny. But salt also is a preserver. If you'll think about that. I mean, we, this was brought to light to us. I'd never thought, I've always thought of salt as flavor because it says that if it, it loses its flavor, you know, it's not good for anything. Mm -hmm. But also salt preserves. Mm -hmm. And and he said that, that, you know, Jesus is the salt in the, in the light. And so he preserves us. You ever thought about that? I had never till tonight. Yeah, till tonight. Thinking about how, how he preserves us. Mm -hmm. That... Uh, you know, once we receive Christ and, and, you know, truly, and we've been made new and uh, he preserves us. He is the, our salt. Mm -hmm. So he keeps us good. You ever think about it? That's pretty good. That's pretty good stuff. You know, you, you think, well, I, I don't know that I have it in me. Well, that's why he said he's the salt and he's the light. So he shows you the way and he preserves that way and he preserves you as you're on that way. Yeah. That's good stuff. Great stuff. That's really good stuff. I mean, if you have zero, well, don't get me started here now. Please. I go to adjusting that hat, and things <laughs> fix to start happening. Of course, I've never preached in the hat, but yeah, I have too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, if there's nothing in your life, since you know, I know that there's a lot of bad things going on right now. People, some people are out of jobs. Some people are out of water. Some people are out of heat. heat. Mm -hmm. We were out of hot water in my. Mother and father and all of that were without water. So we was wanting their heat and our water, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it makes you just think of all the things around us. Man, we could have chose to focus on that. Mm -hmm. We didn't. My wife, whenever I'd get frustrated, she'd just go, we'll just heat some water and we'll just do it this way. And that's just the way it is, you know? And and she never let it affect her. Or I was sitting there calling them every day going, I want some propane. Where's that propane truck? You know what I mean? <laughs> Come in one night, they're supposed to bring it. No propane. What'd I do? <laughs> Fine. I'm going to wash and cold. You know what I mean? But but it was those little things that I was, as the word would say, the small fox was spoiling my whole vine. And You know, I don't want that. I don't want to be guilty of that. The word says, give thanks in all things. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's really hard to be thankful sometimes, and if you can't draw on anything, I don't care if you're 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 having the hardest time, period, and you have Jesus. That's something to be thankful for. Oh yeah. And because this life's but a vapor, here today, gone tomorrow, but eternity's forever. I seen a real neat meme or whatever you want to call them picture that then it really gave me a grasp. I've heard uh, eternity described two ways, but it showed. Somebody holding a grain of sand. And this says life. 
And then it showed this huge desert, and this said eternity. Hmm. So in comparison, I was like, whoa. It puts things into perspective. It does, and I, I heard it put another way that if you take a sparrow and it flies over the Grand Canyon with a uh, Kleenex in its mouth and just flies down and takes a swoop off of the top of Mount Everest, which is the highest point, until it's as deep as the Grand Canyon. And it only swoops by there every seven years. Hmm. Then eternity will just begin. And where we spend that is, a, it's, it's really the, the biggest deal. You know, so knowing that Jesus said, you know what, I got you. I will preserve you and I will light the way. What does it say his word is? A lamp under our feet, a light under our path. He gives us what we need and we need to be grateful. Now, I know that I'm not trying to get off the beaten path, but I had not talk to you on a while but this whole salt thing strikes a chord in me because I'd never ever thought of it as he preser he preserves me that's good stuff that's he says I'll keep you yeah. you know Lord I'm, I'm afraid I don't think I can do this I'll keep you I I'll preserve you I I'll make a way that's good that okay good. it says we do what's important to us others see our priorities by our actions not by our words Matthew 6.33 tells us what will happen if we make God our number one priority. When we live as salt and light in the world, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Okay. That's good stuff. It is. I don't mean to go back to where we just come from, but I was talking about that, that you're the light of the world and the city that's set on the hill cannot be hid. You know, it takes the smallest, I don't mean I mean to go backwards, but it takes the, I was thinking one time, like the Cowboys Stadium. Can you imagine turning the lights off and that, and there's, I mean, you can't see your hand in front of your face, but if somebody was standing out in the middle of that field and they took one of them little keychain lights that you smash, mm -hmm. what's the first thing that, that the whole place could see? That light. That one little light. Mm -hmm. That one tiny little light. So, so it, all, any anything that is dark, light displaces dark, mm -hmm. no matter how dark it is. So I, I, I know I just keep going to that, but that's the light that he is to us, and that's the light that we are to the world. And, and a thankful life is key to that. That's right. Showing people who we are by our love for one another is key to that. And we'll never scare somebody to Jesus but we'll always love them love to him. Mm -hmm. So anyway, carry on. I didn't Okay. Well that brings us to the next area that we're gonna talk about. And that is our attitudes. Hmm. You ever had a crummy attitude? Yes. All the time. <laughs> I do too sometimes, you know. I whether it's crummy or it's just uh lacking in gratitude or if it's just easily frustrated or or, I mean, everybody gets in different moods, I guess you'd call it. But I think a mood and an attitude can be two different things. You know, mood's just a fleeing thought. That makes you kind of, but I think an attitude can be a continuous thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's an ongoing problem. Like a cold is a sickness, but diabetes is a disease. That's a good analogy. So I think that an attitude is more like the diabetes and a mood's just like a, the cold. So everybody gets a spiritual cold sometimes, don't they? Yeah. It's okay, it's just moving through. So. I like that. Well, Ephesians 4.31 tells us to get rid of all bitterness, mm. passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults, no more hateful feelings of any sort. I'm not sure which version of the Bible that comes out of, but those are the words that they use. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can read it if you want, but... For time's sake, we probably won't. Okay. Well, would you read Luke 17? I will. Luke, mm -hmm. I am your father. <laughs> what? I'm just thankful. She has to bless his heart. Bless his heart. Bless him, <laughs> Lord. Bless, bless him. <laughs> What is Luke okay, 17? Luke what? 17, verses 11 through 19. Ooh. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, 
which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go shew yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face and at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed but where are the nine there are not they are they're not excuse me they there are not found that return to give glory to god save this stranger and he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith hath made thee whole awesome. well, keep in mind we're talking about our attitudes here mm -hmm. it says leprosy was seen as god's punishment this disease begins with specks on the eyelids and on the palms, gradually spreading over the whole body, bleaching the hair white, cresting the affected parts with white scales and causing terrible sores and swellings. From the skin, the disease eats inward to the bones, rotting the whole body piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty gnarly. Pretty much the epitome of being eaten alive. Yes. It's like a flesh-eating disease. And in Christ's day, lepers could not live in walled towns, though sometimes they were allowed to live in the open village. And wherever they traveled, they had to make their disease known to people by hollering out, unclean, unclean, and like tearing their clothes and stuff, because it was super contagious and yeah. incurable. But humiliating at that. But humiliating at the same time. You imagine that. But guess what? Jesus cured it anyway. Mm -hmm. They said there was no cure, but they... They don't know about, there's one name above all names, and that's, right. that's the name of Jesus, and it was above leprosy. That's right. It says, Jesus praised the man who came back for his faith, even though the man simply came back to thank him. What is the connection between faith and thankfulness? Faith and thankfulness? Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I do all the talking. The, the connection between faith and thankfulness? Uh -huh. I think that we have, we have faith, and when we see our faith, work in action mm -hmm. or Jesus working you know in our mm -hmm. faith it just in increases our, our gratitude and our thankfulness that he is doing that for us right. so. that and, and trust mm -hmm. knowing that we can trust him whether the outcome be what we want it to be or the outcome come in what we want it to be we can trust him yeah. and we can be thankful for that because there's so many things in this life so many people so many folks going on around us that we just can't trust. I don't know about y'all, I get a million calls a day, it seems like, asking me, uh, I'm in trouble because the Social Security office wants to talk to me. So I played their game and they hang up on me every time. <laughs> and you know, and, and it's getting it's to where funny. I don't even want to answer somebody that's legitimately trying to get a hold to me for something if their number's not because I'm like, I don't want to argue with them again. You know what I mean? But Oh, it's funny. <laughs> The people from the Social Security office will call him and then ask him what his Social Security mm -hmm. number is. And they're like, can I verify by you giving me your name, address, and Social Security number? And I'm like, you're the Social Security office. <laughs> you call you me. have all that. You got my number. That's no, funny. I don't think so, Scooter. You like it? <laughs> but, words, don't fall for it, guys. But it's just like we don't trust anything or anybody hardly around us. You know what I mean? And knowing we can trust him and that he is always, he said he makes all things work together for the good, for those who love him and called according to his, his purpose. Mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can know that he's, I've heard Johnny Pfeiffer say it a hundred times, he's true to his word and his word's always true. And we can be thankful that we have a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Absolutely. So that's what I think. Okay. Well, since we're talking about gratitude, uh -huh. our, our attitude of gratitude, mm. Um, I'm going to read off some quotes to you that I found helpful. Okay. I found were pretty cool. Uh, this one is from Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar. Zig he sounds Ziglar. like he was on one of those uh, <laughs> Lampoon Vacation yeah, movies. Yeah, game show or I'm Zig Ziglar. Uh, it says, of all the attitudes we can acquire, surely the attitude of gratitude is the most important and by far the most life-changing. For sure. For absolute sure. You know what I mean? It's... When, when I do things, let's just say if you do something for your kid or you bought your child a vehicle, 
or something just I don't know and they're just like okay and grab it and leave how does that make you feel mm -hmm. that's how it makes me feel yeah you're mm -hmm. like, well, how do you think it makes God feel whenever he provides for us every day and he protects us every day and he preserves us every day and we can't even simply be truly thank you you know what I mean? But it's not just for him, it's for us. Because mm -hmm. if we're grateful for what we have, you know, when my kids are grateful, I want to give them a lot more, don't you? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Okay, one more quote. This one is from Charles Dickens. He says, Reflect upon your present blessings, of which every man has plenty, not on your past misfortunes, of which all men have some. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. We have way more blessings than we do, you know. Whatever is good. Crummy whatever. things. Yep, that's exactly right. You know, we're sitting in here in our dry home, which we love our new home. Mm -hmm. We were blessed immensely with it. Uh, we drove up in our warm vehicle somewhat. We have not not one, but two cell phones to record oh, on. Oh, yeah. And Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi. <laughs> Smart TVs. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. We have more. Right, we're blessed is what I'm getting at. I ain't, I ain't gloating as much as I'm saying. But more than anything, I got healthy children and a loving wife that God has given me, you know, and and we're, we're truly blessed. We are. And so if I go to thinking about all the haves and I, I ditch all the have-nots, it's pretty hard not to get a little bit, thank you, Lord. I'm just, you know, but... Uh, I, I've said this a hundred times and I'll, I'll probably continue to say it, but I'll never know what it's like to be grateful for food until I was hungry or to be grateful, how to truly be grateful for being well unless I was sick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or being happy until I've been sad. So I think it's, it's key. I, I, I think everybody that's watching has had a time in their life where they were so broken and it hurt so bad that you just couldn't think of anything worse than what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then when God restored you, how grateful you were that you weren't there anymore. Oh yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's the kind of thankfulness I believe that we should have is, man, I've been super cold before, wet, hungry, but here I am, dry, full of a Wendy's slop burger. <laughs> and, uh, you know, bless people. So I want to be grateful always. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you, Bobby. I'm grateful for y'all. Because I have an attitude. Of gratitude. Zig which is a good habit to have. Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar said that, yep. All right, we're going to do our serenity prayer and uh, we're grateful y'all joined us tonight God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time enjoying one moment at a time accepting hardship as a pathway to peace taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is not as I would have it trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Okay, well next time we will be on Lesson 20. Lesson 20. And guess what we're going to talk about? Uh, inventory. We're still talking about the spiritual inventory. Absolutely. Still on Principle 4. Hey, y'all find something to be thankful about this week. Matter of fact, as soon as we get off of here, I want you to just sit and start naming your blessings. Mm -hmm. Just sit and think about what God's done for you, which if you've got air in your lungs, he's done that for you. That little, he put that there. Mm -hmm. Be grateful. We love you, and we thank y'all for joining us. Good night. Night. <laughs>